The story goes that if you listen hard enough, you can hear voices from the past. There's something really quite spooky about it. It's almost as if nature is claiming the back again. Hey guys, we'd just like to thank Fast Pass Facts for having me. Let's dive right into this one. Triceratops Encounter, Universal Studios Orlando. When Universal first purchased the land to create the Universal Orlando Resort, they always had in mind that they would open a second park. The only thing they had to figure out was the theme of this park, given that all of their franchises were already going to be featured at Universal Studios Florida. They had the idea of creating a park dedicated to tunes, and for this, they would buy the licensing rights from companies like Warner, J. Ward, Marvel, and even DC Comics, and create lands themed to their characters. While the plans for this park were being developed, Jurassic Park was a worldwide success. and a new ride was being developed already for Universal Studios Hollywood. They had a great idea of adding this franchise to the new park, and that's how the Islands of Adventure concept was born. We're gonna make a fortune with this place. Universal used the licenses they acquired to create a fantastic park with lots of different franchises, such as Marvel's Spider-Man and The Incredible Hulk. Uh, they had Jay Ward's Dudley Do-Right, King features Popeye, and other comic strips, and Dr. Seuss's The Cat in the Hat, among other characters. They also hired many of the designers that had been working with Disney on Beastly Kingdom to create the Lost Continent area of the park. In 1999, Islands of Adventure was open, and unlike the catastrophic debut of Universal Studios Florida, Islands of Adventure opened with excellent reviews by guests and the press alike. The park opened with six themed lands, Port of Entry, Marvel Superhero Land, Toon Lagoon, The Lost Continent, Seuss Landing, and Jurassic Park. Welcome to Jurassic Park. This last island was themed to Isla Nublar, and one of the main attractions that Universal announced for this area of the park was the possibility of having close encounters with dinosaurs, but more specifically, a Triceratops. This is our Triceratops encounter. This is where our guests have the opportunity to see a living, breathing dinosaur. This encounter was based on the one that Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler saw in Jurassic Park. For this attraction, the three life-size Triceratops were created. Their names were Topper, Chris, and Sarah. These animatronics were created by MD Robotics and they were 30 feet long and almost 10 feet high. Universal requested specific requirements for the robots, including the ability to replicate breathing. Uh, this would be done through synchronized rib cage movements, sneezing, snorting, among other things. These animatronics were very impressive, but ironically, the complexity of the animatronics was, to a large extent, the downfall of this attraction because it caused them to break down regularly. But that was not the only problem. Universal had announced that this encounter would be very personal, but that was far from the truth. And face dinosaurs so real, you'll swear they're alive. The animatronic was pretty far, and there was a barrier that prevented guests from going near it. This caused guests to stop going to see the attraction regularly. In 2002, the encounter started to have many problems, and guests found it constantly closed until it was actually closed permanently in 2003. This attraction remained closed and abandoned until 2010 when it reopened with a whole new name, Discovery Trail. This didn't last long because it was closed again to be reopened in 2011 with its original name. But the problems with the attraction had not been solved and it closed again in 2012, this time for good. Will you please shut down the system? The attraction and the animatronics were left abandoned in this area of the park. And of course, as time passed, the animatronics began to get worn out. They were in a terrible state, one lost its head, the other had an endoskeleton exposed, and they continued getting worse until 2014 when they were removed entirely. The rest of the area continued to be abandoned except for a small area that was reused for a new raptor encounter attraction. 
This new attraction is similar to the Triceratops encounter, but it is much more interactive because it allows guests to get near the raptor, interact with it, and even take pictures. Then in 2018, Universal filed a permit to demolish this area. The raptor encounter attraction was moved and a new attraction is being built where the Triceratops encounter used to be. Universal hasn't officially announced the new attraction, but they have publicly acknowledged it, giving hints, you know, here and there. Rumor says that the new attraction will be an awesome new roller coaster named the Velocicoaster. Life, uh, finds a way. Universal Studios Dubai Land. The Universal Studios brand is a world-renowned name, and it's known for its high-quality attractions, animatronics, and live shows. This has allowed Universal to expand very quickly and strongly, having a presence all around the world with theme parks in Hollywood, Florida, Japan, and Singapore. Universal Singapore is Universal's most recent park, but while it was being developed, Universal was already planning on being a part of one of the most ambitious projects ever created, Dubai Land. Dubai Land was announced back in 2003 as one of the most ambitious leisure developments ever proposed anywhere in the world. This complex would cost $64.3 billion and would include 45 mega projects and 200 sub projects, so you can imagine how huge this project was expected to be. The main focus of this complex would be theme parks, and of course, Dubai Holding, the company that was creating Dubai Land, approached some of the world's best companies to bring their theme parks into the project. Among these parks, we could find Legoland, Six Flags, DreamWorks Studio, and of course, Universal Studios. So Universal started developing a new park with a price tag of $2.2 billion. The project was presented in 2007, it broke ground in 2008, and was set to open in 2010. This park would have five distinct areas, each with its own theme. These areas were Hollywood, New York, Surf City, Epic Adventures, and Legendary Heroes. The Hollywood and New York areas would remain almost the same as the ones that we can find in the US parks, but they would have to be covered and air conditioned because of the high temperatures that Dubai experiences. Epic Adventures would be home to the Waterworld Stunt Show, the Jurassic Park Rapids Adventure Water Ride, and a clone of the Dragon Challenge Dueling Inverted Roller Coaster in Orlando themed now to King Kong. Surf City would be a boardwalk and beach themed area for kids that would include a Woody Woodpecker themed kitty coaster and a sandcastle themed carousel. It would also have three Sesame Street themed attractions. Legendary Heroes was going to include another incarnation of the Revenge of the Mummy indoor roller coaster, the eighth Voyage of Sinbad attraction, and a water play area called King Tot's Oasis. In September of 2008, an office building in the shape of the classic Universal Studios archway was constructed as well as the giant arch that would serve as the park's entrance. This gave the impression that everything was going great and that the park would open pretty much on time for guests, but the reality was completely different. In 2009, the world was going through a massive economic crisis and this hurt a lot of projects. One of these was Dubai Land. This global financial crisis prompted developers to announce that the project would be delayed, and the parks would push back their openings until at least 2012. But a year passed, nothing changed. There was no construction going on in the park, and employees were silently being laid off. In April of 2011, Universal was once again in talks with Dubai officials about finishing the park, but still, everything remained the same. The construction site was abandoned entirely, and the only thing that remained was the office building, a few empty roads, and of course, the famous Universal Park's entrance archway. Finally, in 2016, it was announced that plans for the Universal Studios Dubai Land theme park had officially been scrapped. Dubai Land is still being developed, but some of the main theme park projects like Six Flags were canceled. Parks like the Formula One theme park, which had also been started, were left abandoned, just like Universal was. And parks like Legoland and DreamWorks parks were built, but not at Dubai Land, but they were built at Dubai Parks and Resorts, just 35 kilometers from Dubai Land. 
So that's gonna wrap up today's video. I can't thank you guys enough for stopping by and checking it out. I can't thank Fast Pass Facts enough for having me on. Again, my name's Dustin, I'm from the Theme Park Shark. And if you guys get the chance and enjoyed the video, definitely don't forget to check out my own channel at Theme Park Shark. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram at Theme Park Shark. And once again, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. We'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much, Dustin, for being here today. Make sure to check out Theme Park Shark. We have another Abandoned by Universal video coming up next week. So tell us in the comments, what do you think we'll be talking about?